Hey everyone, welcome back to another Vivarium build. This is the same Vivarium from the ultra realistic Concrete Rocks background, so if you haven't seen that yet, definitely check it out. Unlike my other Vivariums, I will be putting backgrounds on the sides of this tank as well. That said, I started out by using some alcohol to clean off the sides of the tank. Next, I turned the tank on its side and siliconed some of the extra rocks from the tutorial in place. I let the silicone cure and then flipped the tank on its other side and repeated the same process. Then I grabbed some parchment paper and traced the outlines of the rocks. After getting the rocks traced, I cut the outlines and used this as a guide to cut out a sheet of cocoa husk liner. The reason why I used cocoa husk liner as opposed to foam for example is that it's low profile. I have to make the most of the space in these vivariums since they are on the small side to begin with. I then stuck the liner to the side of the tank using some silicone. I was surprised how well this one stuck to the glass as I haven't had it work this well before. Once it was in place, I used some clamps on the front to keep it from curling back into the tank. After the silicone cured, I repeated the same process on the opposite side, only this time around I used some weights to keep it in place. Once the cocoa husk liner was in place, I could convert this aquarium into a vivarium. I wanted to try something a little different this time around using some weld on acrylic cement. I got this stuff a while ago for some other projects I have going on right now, and I figured I might as well put it to use. I didn't want to waste one of my applicators, so I used an old paintbrush to apply the cement. After doing so, I got a few pieces of polycarbonate and used some weights and clamps to keep them in place. Using the cement was easier and more effective than using the screws from the original conversion. However, I didn't want to show this method originally because the screws are easier and cheaper to access and I didn't want to make the conversion permanent. Doing it like this actually bonds the plastics together, so now I'm stuck with this unless I replace the aquarium's frame. After letting this all sit for about 8 hours, I put some silicone on the inside of the tank near the bottom piece of polycarbonate just to ensure that the bottom area of the tank is watertight. I'm confident in my abilities so I didn't bother to check if it was watertight. Then I used the same procedure as before to attach some acrylic hinges to the bottom piece of polycarbonate. After letting this set for another 8 hours, I attached what will become the door of this vivarium using the same process. Next, I used one of my guides from the conversion series to add some ventilation holes to the top piece of polycarbonate. I printed out 4 of these to begin with, knowing that that's how many tanks I would convert. Then I used the step drill bit to create a hole in the bottom piece of polycarbonate for this uni seal. I used this, in addition to an airline flow valve, to easily drain my vivarium's false bottom. Unknowingly, I didn't have an airline flow valve when I started this build, so I used this brush to plug the hole until I got more in the mail. To complete this conversion process, I attached a hook which will act as my locking mechanism. Now I could begin creating this vivarium. As you should come to expect by now, I'm going to start with the false bottom. You may recall that I said I prefer using the egg crate false bottom. This still holds true, but I didn't have any spare egg crate at the time, 
so I use some Leica, which I have an abundance of right now. That said, I generally try to work with the materials I have before buying anything additional. Once I had a nice layer of leak on the enclosure, I cut some carbon fiberglass window screen to size. As I've explained a number of times, this is best cut slightly larger than whatever you are using it for. Next I added a generous layer of lumpwood charcoal and some of my tropical substrate mix. This is more or less my take on an ABG mix. Follow the link to see how to make it for yourself. Even now this is really starting to come together. I don't typically put backgrounds on the sides of my vivariums because I like to look in through the sides of the tank. However, moving forward, it's something I might incorporate more frequently. Now I'm going to add a few of the hardscape elements, which consist of some sticks. It took me a really long time to get these situated in a way that I felt looked natural. It's tough sometimes to place these elements because they should be purposefully placed to look as though they weren't purposefully placed. That probably sounds ridiculous, but think about it. We want to place things in a way that looks natural. In nature, things are kind of haphazardly arranged, yet somehow it's always harmonious. In my opinion, it's the most beautiful piece of art that could ever exist. In my works, I try to capture the essence of this beauty, even though I can't even come close. Anyways, I digress. I grabbed some of these Brazil nut pods from my 125 gallon vivarium and coated the inside of them with some silicone and cocoa fiber so that they hold water a little better. I'm gradually taking elements out of my 125 for a different project, but that's a topic for another time. Next, I'm going to attach some plants to the sides of the tank. Here, I have some ficus pumula, and what I'm doing is attaching it to the cocoa husk using some super glue. This might sound strange, but it's been done before, and it's a technique that's frequently used in aquariums. To do so, I put dabs of glue on the background, and then applied a little pressure to the plant until they were glued in place. I continued to attach ficus pumula to this side of the enclosure until I had enough to start a living wall. Then I moved on to the other side of the vivarium and repeated the same process. After getting the walls covered, I began attaching some cuttings of the Ficus Pumula quercifolia to various things throughout the enclosure using some super glue once more. Next, I dumped the excess cocoa fiber out of the seed pods and placed them in the background. Before adding the main plants, I wanted to get a feel for where I'd put these Talansia. For my first plant, I have a button fern. I figured it was about time to use a fern, and I think it matches the overall aesthetic of the setup quite nicely. Then I came back to the foreground and added some more creeping fig, as well as some java moss. Now 
Next, I grabbed one of the Talansia and glued it to the right side of the tank. I grabbed my second plant, which I believe to be a Cryptanthus bivitatus, and put it into the enclosure. Next, I got some Photonia white vein and planted it near the background of the tank. Eventually, as this grows in, it will become my main background plant. It was really tough to choose plants that wouldn't cover up the entire background. I put a lot of work into making it, and it is intended to be one of the focal points of this enclosure. Oh yeah, my flow valves finally came in the mail at this point, so I could put one of those into the uni seal. As I looked at this vivarium some more, I decided that I should add some more sticks. I fiddled around with these until I found some good locations. Next I added bits of java moss and a few cracks on the background. I didn't go overboard with this because I wanted to retain most of the detail on the background without it being covered with moss. I also added a few cuttings of creeping fig to the background as well. Then I tinkered around with the Talancia once more until I decided on some potential locations. I glued this one in place and left it at that. I felt that the other two didn't match the aesthetic of this vivarium and I didn't want to overcrowd the enclosure. If I had more that looked like these I would have put them in but I don't have any right now unfortunately. Next I added a few more pieces of moss and fine tuned all of the details which completed the build. Then I thoroughly misted the tank with some dechlorinated water. Finally I removed the protective plastic from the polycarbonate, shut the vivarium and then placed it on the rack with my other two 10 gallon vertical vivariums. Oh yeah I almost forgot we have to make it bioactive. I grabbed some springtails and dwarf white isopods and dumped them into the enclosure. Overall I really like how this vivarium turned out. However it posed a lot of challenges. One being that I couldn't film from the sides of the tank. This was tough because I had to work in the space without blocking the camera. Another was that I didn't want to cover much of the background. This limited the plants that I could choose. That said, unlike the other two, this one is really going to have to grow in a lot before I'm truly pleased with how it looks. As I explained earlier, the Fetonia white vein is what will become the background plant. I chose this plant because when it grows tall, I feel that it should leave enough of the background exposed. Additionally, right now, the left side of the tank seems like it's lacking. I wanted to leave some space for the button fern to grow in a bit, and my hope is that eventually the Fetonia will fill in most of this gap. The likelihood that I will make additional changes to this vivarium is high, but we'll see what happens. So that about does it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, and thank you for watching.